Okay, so you're creating content for social media, but what gear, camera equipment, lights, microphones should you be using? Well, the reality is that you can go as simple as using your phone or as complex as using seminar cameras. But let's learn from Coach Lenny V, fitness trainer and entrepreneur. He's gonna teach us what equipment he uses to post consistently on social media and grow his business online. So I got a question in terms of the gear that you use to, to record. What, yeah, what camera equipment are you using? Uh, microphones, lights, yeah. and how do you do that? So this is something that I'm definitely stepping up my game with. Maybe not on the same level mm. as you. I just you know, saw a photo with, your, with, your, with what you're using before. I'm like, oh, I'm definitely not on that level yet. Um, <laughs> but in the gym, if I'm filming content in the gym, I keep it simple. I'm going using my iPhone to film. And you now I was second guessing myself, like, oh, maybe I should use a better quality camera, but like I was, I've no, I've no other inf you know, influencers. I wanted to call myself an influencer just yet, but I have influencers with, you know, 2 million followers who just use their iPhone. So when yeah. it comes to that, I might just keep it simple, especially when you're in a public gym, you don't want to be fucking with this massive camera, um, you know, bringing extra attention to yourself unless you've got the place booked out. So I might just keep it simple in the gym. Uh, audio wise, when I'm doing that kind of content, I've got a, the DJI mic, DJI mic, um, mm -hmm. which is very good. Highly recommend that. Um, it's something that I bought actually when I was in PV, but yeah, I remember. But that the whole I don't know if you remember, but like that I got taxed so heavily around that all the import costs. It was crazy. Yeah. I, I bought it for like maybe four hundred Australian dollars or something, but then I also got taxed import costs four hundred dollars. This guy, the delivery guy, came to my door and he was like. To get this, you've got to pay 400 bucks. I'm like, I just, what do you, what do you mean? I already paid, but anyway. Anyway, I digress. So that's what I use, great, great content. Uh, great for my audio. Uh, I actually bought a Rode microphone. It is a... The Wireless Go? No, it's a Rode A1. It's what I'm using now, but this is more of a, mus a okay. musical microphone. Um, yep. My brother's a musician and I thought, I'll just get what he's getting because it'll match for if we do a podcast and it's obviously a good quality, but um, mm -hmm. it's a much more effort if you want to bring around the world. So I didn't bring this with me because it's got so many cables with it. So what right. I opted with instead as a much lighter version was these Rode um, USB mics. So they're a little bit shitty in terms of they just capture all the audio. Um, but it's good for doing client check-ins when I'm speaking on camera, instead of just using the Mac, MacBook Pro inbuilt microphone, I can have that and then I can I can stand away and I can demonstrate things and I can still pick me up with a good quality. So that's good for that purpose. But as soon as you do a podcast or anything, it's not good. So I, if I'm doing a podcast overseas or even here now, I, I don't really bother with the, with the hectic setup. I just do the DJI mic. And so then you can actually just sit back a bit more relax and uh, have it on you like a, like a, a clip on. And uh, that works really well in terms of the audio stuff. In terms of what I like to film things with, if I'm filming things here, like the camera that's on me now is a Sony uh, ZV-E10, which is pretty basic, um, the starter camera, I would say, but honestly, I c it's just about learning the settings and I've, Put it off so much in terms of just like oh it's just one of those things i don't want to like i don't want to learn the settings but once i've tinkered around i know the lighting a bit more now i know that's it it's hitting more than 0 0.3 then it's a bit too bright and it's gonna like it's gonna make it grainy and all that kind of stuff so i'm learning i'm learning i'm getting there um <laughs> but that does the job i need to learn a bit more about it but what i find is it's also not great if you want to film now if you want to film youtube with the camera you, gain, you lose that stability, you know, you, you mm. become shaky. So sometimes an iPhone is just, it's got the inbuilt stability with it. So sometimes an iPhone yeah. is just smoother. So what I'm going to try and combat that with and what I've bought probably a year ago now is a gimbal. But if you've ever, if you've ever played around with a gimbal, my God, is that an annoying thing to set up? So I've, I've used it maybe once, not properly. So that's my task over the weekend because my brother's making a music video and I'm going to be his filmer for it. Um, oh, so nice. using my Sony's ZV-E10, but then putting the gimbal 
alongside that and making hopefully that will smooth it up a little bit otherwise it becomes a bit too rocky and then i got a few tripods just a standard um gear kodo and then just a normal uh tripod for my camera as well so like when you're on when i'm on the go around the world you know trying to keep things as minimal as possible otherwise you it's just you know traveling with heavy stuff just sucks um so that's why i was interested when you said that is it that microphone there is it usb mic or the other one uh no the other one i think i have it around me maybe i could show it to you yeah because you can just what you, you can just there's no the cables are the most annoying thing having lots of yeah. big cables with you you, you can just stick it into a your, your laptop or wherever and you can just go boom ready to go that's yeah. the best thing about it and uh it's a condenser mic as well is it uh so this that's a condenser this is right? a no, this is a, a dynamic microphone. Dynamic, right. Yeah, so a condenser microphone is usually like a shotgun microphone or um, they're usually more sensitive. Yeah. So there are microphones that if you're standing far away or it's loud around you, they may pick that up. Mm. But also they're, they're quite good if they're on top of a camera. Like right now I have a condenser mic on top of my camera. It's a shotgun mic pointing straight at me as a backup audio. But this being a dynamic microphone, it has a very close pickup pattern. So if I kind of talk behind mm. from the side, you, you don't really hear it. Yeah. And it requires higher power or higher input. So it has to be close to me or I have to be loud. These are actually traditionally used for instruments, actually. Yeah, right. For, yeah, this is a music microphone. And not necessarily for singing per se, but for like amplifiers. Yeah, okay. When you have like a really loud guitar amp and you want to pick up that like like its entire like raw sound, you'd use one of these microphones. Mm -hmm. If you used a condenser, um, your gain would be at like 0 0.1 because it'd be very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So th these are great for podcasts. That's why they've been reappropriated for that. I see but the around. microphone that I have, yeah, yeah, this is super popular one, the, the Shure. Mm. But the one that I have looks very, very similar. It's just kind of roughly the same size, but at the back it has USB-C yeah. and, the, and the XLR. So it, although it is a larger microphone in terms of portability, yeah. uh, the quality is phenomenal. And I do like our coaching calls, uh, our client meetings and all that stuff with that mic. And this is my buddy's. He just lent it to me and I really like the way that it sounds, so I use it for the podcast. Does it pick up the other one? Does it pick up all sounds, or is it similar to that one where if you have you have to be speaking directly to it? You have to be speaking directly okay. to it. Nice. nice. The cool thing about the other one is that when you plug in with the USB C, it has a little like uh, mute button, so you can mute, which is awesome. Especially, I have a mechanical keyboard, so when I'm typing, you can hear the keys. Mm. So if I'm on a call, just tap it, mute. Um, it also has a gain volume knob at the back, so you can turn up the volume on the mic itself. Mm -hmm. And the coolest thing of all is that you can plug your headphones into the microphone and control the audio output as well. So in a way, it works as an interface that you just have to take that. Because like right now, I'm using um, yeah. an actual Same. audio interface. This is the audio box Go. So I got to plug this mic into here and then this into my computer and then my headphones into this. So I got a whole kit, mm -hmm. but it's not very practical for when you're out in the run yeah. and or on the go and you need yeah. to do all that, so. That's why on the go, just having like a portable microphone, like a DJ, DJI mic, Rode mic, just on the, they're the best bet. And then, yeah, I 100%. mean, and then just a camera, camera and a small tripod, that's probably the best way mm -hmm. if you're on the go. Yes, having yeah. a nice camera can help be better, better but, just if you want to keep it light, that's the best way to travel, I would say. Yeah, I'd say more for like if you want that like studio quality and you have that studio environment, having a, a mirrorless camera or yeah. a camera like the one you, you're using now is definitely good. Yeah. But ultimately, the best camera is the, the most functional camera for what you're using it. If it's allowing you to create and record, yeah, that's the best camera to have. And like you said, phones now with the stabilization, the quality... Like it's really mm. hard to kind of kind of beat that when you are running and gunning, right? But phones don't do it as well indoor setting. I find when you got a ring light on you, it's just it's just not 
the quality is not as good. You can definitely tell the difference. Definitely. One of the main differences is the, uh, the depth of field. Mm. Um, you'll see, well, you can't see it now because we're on my computer webcam, but on the camera feed, I'm shooting at 2.8 aperture. So it's sharp and focused on me, but the background is, is nice and blurry. So yeah. it gives it kind of like that aesthetic, which is hard to get on, on phones. But I know that the iPhone 13, 14, 15, they have the cinematic mode. So you're able to actually like um, shoot with a shallow depth of field and have that blurry effect. Though it's a mix of like AI with the camera itself because the cameras on these phones, they're actually tiny, the mm -hmm. sensors. So it's hard to get that um, that aesthetic with such a tiny little sensor compared to a mm. like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. But yeah, like it's mm. whatever camera works best for you is is good. That's why I was curious because you film a lot on the go. You're filming in the gym. You're filming in the grocery store, mm. and the quality always looks pretty good, pretty sharp. And at the end of the day, if um, if it's working for you, then that's that's the main thing. Yeah. Right? Bigger camera when it's indoors by yourself and then more minimal when you're on the go. So you don't bring as much attention to yourself, essentially. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this conversation valuable, appreciate it if you can click the subscribe button, the like button, and that bell notification so you don't miss out on the next ones. Peace.